Hey Uber Tuberland, this is Ed with Jack of All Trades. Uh, so today we're going to do a review on the RCA home theater system I bought. Now I bought the home theater system that's got the RT2781HB receiver. Uh, it came with five speakers, and it came with a center, and it came with a subwoofer. So that's what I'm going to be reviewing today. Um, you can buy these any number of places and they're less than $200. But before we get into the review, let me just ask, please hit that like and subscribe button at the bottom. Uh, I'm not getting any monetary gain from this. I don't have Patreon. I'm not asking for money. The only reason I do this is because I kind of like making videos. I kind of like to hear myself talk. And I thought, if you know what, if I can throw out an opinion out there that's honest, that's not paid for by a company, uh, maybe it'll help somebody out and it'll help other people make informed decisions on what they want. And that's what I'm going to be. I am completely blunt. I'm totally wearing everything out all on my sleeve. I don't care if you like it. Uh, I, I'm just going to tell you like it is and like how I see it. So if you like that kind of content, please hit the subscribe button. Click on that notification bell. Make sure you don't miss a single one of my episodes. And I'll be throwing random videos up like this all the time. So if you like that kind of content, here I am. I'm doing it. So please hit like, hit subscribe comment the more you comment the more it helps the logarithms on on youtube i will never ask you for money i will never ask you the viewers for money i'm never going to get a patreon account if i want to if i want to make money off of youtube i'm going to charge youtube for it or i'll do it through uh, amazon influence or whatever but i will never ask you guys for the money and i will never even if a company sends me an item to review or to use or to try out you are going to get my no, my no BS opinion on it. If I hate it, I'm going to tell you this thing's a piece of garbage and it belongs right in the trash. And I don't care if they gave it to me or not. So you're going to get nothing but truth from me. Enough of that. Let's go on to the receiver and let's, let's see what we've got with the RCA home theater system. So uh, about the receiver itself. Now the receiver, they claim 300 watts on this receiver. Now you, you got to understand, this is an RCA home theater system. It's not an Onkyo or anything, any of this high stuff. If you're an audiophile and you're watching this video and you are super anal retentive about your sound quality and stuff like that, go watch a different video because this, this is not an audiophile system. This is your garden variety, basic home work, home, home office, workshop, garage, maybe even in your living room if you're not super picky home theater system this is no high-end system it's a 200 dollars system and that's what you're getting is a 200 dollars system but they claim 300 watts uh, through all of the channels you know you add up all the channels and they claim 300 watts and that might be so uh, what i have in my mind as to what a 300 watt system should sound like as far as volume and and things of that effect is different from what I actually got. But regardless, the system is very adequate for what I'm using it for. My workshop here is 18 by 22. Uh, I've got all five speakers and the subwoofer set up and it fills the room up very, very nicely. I would say probably safely, it would fill up your garden variety living room with really good full rich sound, depending on your level of intricacy that you are concerned with or your palette for audio. Again, if you're an audiophile, this is not a system for you. This is for somebody who just wants to improve their sound experience and not have to break the bank doing it. Uh, the system is Dolby, uh, Dolby licensed. I do believe it goes up to Dolby ProLogic 2 and it works. Uh, all the speakers, you get full surround. You can, you can set up the distance on the speakers. You can set up the time delays on the speakers so that when the airplane is flying across the TV, it ends up in the front, starts in the front of the room, ends up in the back of the room. If you've got a gunfight in the background during a war season, you can, or scene, you can actually hear the bullets whizzing through the room. It, it does all of that. And it, and it does it actually for a 300 or $200 system. It actually does it quite well. Uh, again, it's not a high end system, but for what it is, it does a pretty doggone good job. So the system comes with five speakers. You get a center speaker and you get four satellite speakers. Two for the front, two for the rear, your center, and it also comes with a subwoofer. Uh, let's talk about the subwoofer first. It is a non-powered passive subwoofer. The subwoofer is powered off of the receiver and the receiver only. So 
Yes, if you turn the subwoofer off, you can hear a noticeable difference. Is it going to rattle the windows in the house? Probably not. But you do get that level of bass that just makes the whole experience a little bit of rich, a little bit richer. So the subwoofer is is adequate. If you are really wanting some serious thump, and if you want the neighbors to know that you are playing music or what what movie they're watch you're watching, the subwoofer is a little lackluster in that respect. But it is adequate for what its intent and purpose is, and that is to provide some bass to the full audio experience. Again, you're not going to get that super deep thump that you get with a big powered subwoofer. Uh, the center speaker is the only speaker that is shielded. Uh, what you need to know about speakers is speakers have magnets in them. And magnets and TV screens do not interact. So your center speaker, you typically put that very close to your TV because it is your center channel. That's where all the voices are coming through from, all the dialogue, some of the music is all coming through that center speaker. So you want it in front of the TV so that's like the TV is talking to you and then the satellites just provide the surrounding atmospheric style sound. The center speaker is the only one that's shielded and that's the only one that you should place anywhere inside of two feet of your television set. Uh, I don't care what kind of TV you have, if it's not a shielded speaker, keep it away from your TV. But the center speaker, you can put that right on top of the TV if you want to and it's not gonna hurt a thing, it is shielded. The four satellite speakers are not shielded. Uh, the, as far as the four satellite speakers go, they do exactly what they're supposed to do. Now, one of the first things you're going to notice when you take all this stuff out of the box, well, actually the first thing you're going to notice when you pick up the box is it's not stupid heavy. Typically, with consumer electronics, weight is kind of indicative of quality. Now that's gone less and less and less over the years have come, but typically in, in, in the home consumer electronics industry, if, if your receiver or your speaker or your subwoofer or whatever it is you're picking up has got some substantial weight to it, that's usually a sign of quality. If it's light, it's usually a sign of lack of quality. And the first thing you're going to notice when you pick up this box is it's not crazy heavy. It, it just isn't. And then when you start pulling the components out, you start pulling the speakers out, you're going to notice that they're almost feather light. I mean, there is very, very little weight to this. I can't say that the weight is a direct proportional, directly proportional to the quality of the speakers because the speakers sound pretty good. To my untrained ear and for my intents and purposes, the speakers don't sound half bad. The receiver itself is not that physically heavy. There's not a lot of heavy duty components in it. They don't weight it down to, to reduce vibration or anything like that. So this, the receiver itself is actually quite light. So if you're, if you're wondering why the box is so light, you've got all these components in here. It's, it's a light system and it's a $200 system. So take it for what it's worth. Uh, what can you hook up to this thing? Uh, the, the system has got four HDMI ports in the back of it. Three of them are standard HDMIs and one's an HDI, HDMI ARC, which if you don't know anything about ARC, there's a thousand YouTube videos out there on ARC, but basically what ARC does is it provides a return path for audio over your HDMI cable. So typically HDMI cables push sound and audio in one direction from the component to your TV. But if for whatever reason you need to get audio back from your TV to a component, i.e. a receiver or a sound bar or something like that, you need to use an ARC port, an HDMI ARC. I'm not going to go into that, that's another video. But this receiver has four HDMIs, one of which is ARC. Uh, it's also got your garden variety coaxial red and white audio connections on it. It also has two optical or fiber optic optical connectors on it for digital optical and then it's got the one the one coax. Uh, right now I have my system plugged into my TV using the optical and it blows out 5.1 uh, Dolby surround without a problem. It's very quick, there's no latency, there's, there's nothing, nothing wrong with it. It works very very well. 
I have not plugged it into ARC because it's in my workshop and I have really no need to. I needed to get one connection from my TV to my receiver. I use digital optical, works perfectly. Uh, some of the other things about the receiver, the receiver's got AM, FM radio in it. Now, I don't listen to a lot of AM, but I do listen to FM radio. Uh, my office is out here, I work out here. So a lot of times I'll put the FM radio on in the background and the sound quality of the FM radio is very good. Uh, if the radio station is broadcasting in stereo, you get very good stereo quality sound. Uh, no complaints whatsoever. They give you a, a chintzy FM antenna, which is just basically a wire that plugs into the back of the, of the, the set and it works just fine. I pick up all the local radio stations with very little static and very little reception issue. Uh, there's one radio station that has a little bit of reception issue, but that's not the receiver's fault. That's my location. Uh, in my backyard here, what you can't see is I've got high tension, high power wires, electrical wires running right through my backyard, and they provide a, a pretty fair bit of interference, and it's an issue, uh, but that's another story. Uh, it's also got, what else has it got here? It's got a USB plug or a USB jack in the front. You can actually load music onto a USB stick, plug that USB stick into the receiver and it'll play the music that's loaded on that stick. I have no need to have tried that, but I have tried it and it does work and it works quite well. Uh, I don't know why you would do that with, with Bluetooth technology these days, the radio stations and whatever, but if that's what you like, this does have the capability of doing it. Uh, it's got Bluetooth capability. You can actually Bluetooth your device into the receiver, and that works very, very well. I've Bluetoothed off my phone. Uh, I've Bluetoothed off my computer. I get full sound out of it. It actually works really, really well. So if I'm sitting at my computer and I'm watching a training video or something like that and I want to put it on the Bluetooth speakers, it works quite well. Uh, it's extremely easy to set up. The instructions are very, very good on, in the book on how to set up the Bluetooth. No issues. If, if a redneck like me can get my phone to sync up with my receiver, you are going to have no problems. Uh, it's, it's very, very intuitive. It's extremely easy to use. Uh, the remote control. Let's go over the remote. Uh, the remote is your garden variety remote control. It's got all the buttons you would expect. It's got all the, the sources at the bottom of the remote control that you can use. You can select tuner or your aux or your Bluetooth or your USB coax optical or HDMI arc. You, you, can, you can select anything you need to do out of this. You've got a test tone button on your remote so you can actually test your speakers to make sure all your speakers are working. You've got some rudimentary audio settings. You can select classic or rock or bass and you can do no dorking around with the receiver to see what sound you like the best. Uh, it's got your tuner buttons, your sleep buttons, all your, your channel uh, for your presets on your radio perhaps, your volume buttons, your typical arrow buttons. You can do pretty much anything you want to with this remote and it's very, very simple to figure out. I didn't read the instructions. I'm a man. I never read instructions. Instructions go the way of the dodo. I never, never ever read them. I, I did look at the instructions to see how the Bluetooth setup, uh, setup process was and then very quickly realized I didn't need it. All you have to do is select Bluetooth. It shows up in your list of devices. You select it and it syncs up with no problems whatsoever. Everything you can do is on the remote. I have gone through the instruction booklet and it's extremely thorough. It's extremely well detailed out. They did a really, really good job and it comes in a multitude of languages if you happen to be a non-English speaking person. And if you are a non-English speaking person and you're watching this video, you're in a lot of trouble because I don't speak French, Spanish, Italian, or anything else. I speak two languages, English and bad English. If you can't understand either one of those two languages, you are basically up an unsanitary tributary with improper propulsion because you're not going to get anything out of this video. So that being said, that's kind of the basic overview of the receiver. Let's just, let's, let's relocate the camera. I'll show you how I've got mine set up and we'll, we'll take a look at the system and I'll push some buttons on it so you can kind of see how it works. But 
I can't play any music and I can't play any movies on it because of copyright stuff. It'll get taken down and YouTube won't like it and then I'll get sued by whoever made the movie or the music and then it just turns into a big mess and I'm not gonna go there. So, I, I unfortunately I can't play any sound for you per se, but I can run the test tones I guess, but I'll just show you my basic setup so you understand how it is. So there's my, there's my TV and you can see the receiver is on a shelf above my TV uh, along with the subwoofer which I laid down on its side. Uh, if you're going to lay the subwoofer down on the side just make sure that you don't lay it down so you're covering any ports. Um, I don't have any of the ports covered. The side that it's laying on is a solid side and you don't want to interrupt any airflow coming out of your subwoofer. Uh, you can see on top of the receiver I have my center, ch center channel speaker. Seemed like as good a place as any to put it. So that's how I've got it set up. Now if you look on the back of my system here, you can see when I built my shop, I put in a speaker wiring jack. So I ran all my speaker wires through my walls. And so I don't have this mess of speakers. I'm not stapling speakers, uh, speaker wire to the ceiling or any business like that. So I, I, had a, I had a moment of clarity when I was building the shop and decided I was going to wire my speakers and stuff in. And if you're doing that, I would highly suggest you do that. Just pick a spot where you want to put your receiver. But uh, just understand this is when you see where I put my speakers and stuff, you'll know why it looks the way it does. So there's my receiver. And I've got it, so there's my workbench, my TV, and my receiver, and my subwoofer, and my center speaker. Then over here is one of the satellites. And I have a satellite speaker in each corner. And I just put up a very basic shelf. In fact, that shelf I actually had laying around. It was about ready to get thrown away, and I repurposed it. Uh, I got a lot more room up there to put other stuff, but it's, for the, for the time being, it's only up there to hold the speakers and what I'm going to do is I'm eventually going to uh, make a make a bracket. I'm probably going to screw in some kind of a res, uh, screw in style receiver and make a bracket to hang it off of the ceiling or the wall. But that's a later project. So I've got a speaker like that in every corner of the shop. This one is actually sitting on top of on top of my cabinet and this one is above my beer fridge so I've got a speaker in every corner don't mind the cobwebs all right so here's my receiver let's uh, let's just go down some of the functions on the remote uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna select a source now at the very bottom of the remote you have all the sources that you can possibly do but of course, before you can do anything, you have to turn it on. So when you turn on the receiver, the receiver is going to automatically remember the last function or the last source you selected, which is kind of nice. So if you were listening to the radio or if you were listening to FM radio last time you were using the receiver, and when you go to turn it back on again, that's exactly what it's going to show you is the FM receiver. That's the first thing it's going to come up on. So the last time I was using the system, I was listening to the radio. And when I turn it on, it gives you a welcome screen. This is something that's kind of annoying is there's a boot up here. So this is the offsets and everything inside of the system. All the little magical electrons and trolls and gnomes and stuff going around and getting things all working. It takes a little bit of time for it to fire up. It's not a barn burner. So that's the tuner. That was the last thing I was listening to. Then you just, all, to select a different source, you just select it at the very bottom of the remote. If I wanted to go to the aux online, if that's what I've got a DVD or a Blu-ray player plugged into, that's what I select. I can, of course, select Bluetooth. I can select the USB. I can select the coax, or I can select the optical, if that's what I have hooked up to my TV, or I can select the HDMI. Now, for the optical and the HDMI, there's two optical ports, and to select optical port number two, you just hit optical again. If you want to select number one, you just hit it again. For HDMI, you push the HDMI button, it automatically comes up to HDMI one. If you click HDMI again, it'll take HDMI two and HDMI three. 
the, okay, so the, the other thing that you can do on here is you can do something called test tone. Uh, this, is a, this is to verify that all your speakers are working. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it up here so we can hear the test tones. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit test tone. And it's, it's running my front left speaker right now. If I hit test tone, or if I hit the arrow over button, it's going to select my center. If I hit the arrow over button again, it's going to select my front right. Hit the arrow over button again, it's going to select my rear surround. And if I hit it one more time, it's going to select my subwoofer. And if I hit it one more time, it selects my surround left. So you can just test that all of your speakers work. When I want to get out of that, I just push the exit button. Very, very simple to use. Uh, there's also some preset equalizer settings if you want. You can select pop. You can select flat. You can select jazz. You can select classical. You can select rock. You can select any one of these presets in, in, the, in the system already, and then you can just go with that. And that's, that's actually very, very easy to use. Uh, subwoofer. So there's a subwoofer button on here. If I hit the subwoofer, if you just keep hitting subwoofer, it gives you four different subwoofer settings. It starts off with soft, which is almost non-existent. Uh, you can barely barely pick up any audible bass. If you hit subwoofer again, it gives you balanced, what they consider balanced, just enough subwoofer to balance the system. If you hit it again, it goes to strong, which increases it. And if you hit it to powerful, this is the most, this is the strongest bass setting. Uh, I like a lot of bass, so I leave it at powerful. Uh, sue me. There's a, there's a setup button on here, and the setup button doesn't do much. Uh, it basically allows you to do the dimmer, and if you select dimmer 1 or dimmer 0, that's really the only two settings you have. That's all you get. And then if you arrow over, oh, to go back to dimmer, to change the dimmer setting, you arrow up or arrow down, and that's, it'll cycle through either one. Then if you hit the right arrow button, it'll give you a, a subwoofer setting again where you can select soft, balanced, strong, or powerful. It's just another way to get to the subwoofer setting. Uh, if you arrow over again, it, it, do you want surround sound? Yes or no? It's just a way of selecting whether or not you want surround sound. Uh, do you have a center channel? Yes or no? Yes, I do. And it takes you back to dimmer. So the setup button is kind of lackluster. Uh, next to the setup button is the distance button. This is where you set the distance to all your speakers. Now, true audio files will do this. They will pull a tape measure from that speaker to wherever the primary listener is in the room, and they will adjust this. So if I hit uh, setup, it gives me my front speakers. Uh, what is that? 15 feet. Center speaker is 10 feet, surround speakers are 10 feet. And that's really what you get to do. You don't get to individually adjust each speaker. You just get to adjust the front, the center, and the surrounds. Level. Uh, the level button, it just allows you to set the decibels put out by each speaker. So the front level, you can select that and if you just hit the up arrow button, you can increase the decibel level of the front speakers. If you arrow over, you can select the decibel level of the center speaker. If you select the rear level, you can select the decibel level of the rear speakers. And then the sub or surround speakers. Oh, I was wrong. Front right, center, front left. That's what those are. Okay, I'm stupid. You caught me. Surround right. 
you can select the levels up to 10. Surround left, you can select the levels up to 10. And I'm doing all this with the remote from behind the camera here. And the subwoofer level up to 10. So that's the level button on the remote. We've already gone over the subwoofer button. All right, let's talk about uh, setting the presets on the tuner because this is a little tricky. Uh, it's a little goofy, actually. Uh, it's kind of a kind of a pain to do. So the way I found to set the preset channels on this, that's the easiest to do. You're on tuner mode, and you can obviously see I'm tuned to 106.7. So the best way to do this is to first tune the tuner to whatever radio station it is you want to put into the preset. So in this instance, I want to set the preset or one of my preset channels to 106.1. Now there's 30 preset channels that you can that you can utilize here. So if you need 30 presetted preset radio stations, uh, God bless you. Uh, I've got four tuned into mine. So at any rate, I want to set 106.1 FM to one of my preset channels. So the easiest way I found to do this is once you get that tuned into your, your receiver, you can push the memory button on the remote, select the channel 04 that you want to set it to, and then push memory again. So then when you go through your channels, channel 2 I've got set to 93.1, Channel 3, I've got set to 107.9, and channel 4 is now set to 106.1. That's the easiest way I've found to set the preset, and that's, that's the way to do it. It's a little hokey. Uh, the instructions do outline it, how to do it. Uh, if you're going to try and figure it out on your own, you're going you're gonna to have a lot of cursing, but it, it, is, it is manageable, and you can do it. Uh, now when you're setting that preset channel to channel 4 you actually have to hit 04 you can't hit just the number 4 you have to hit two digits to select the preset channel and in this case the preset channel was channel 4 and then if you want to get into the double digit numbers when you get up into 10s and 11s and 15s and whatever then you hit 1 and then the second number one zero one 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 five one nine same with the 20s two 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 three two four same with up to 30 which is three zero and then there's only 30 30 possibilities for presets but in the lower numbers one through nine you have to hit the zero first so just make sure you do that so that that's how to set the preset on the tuner other than that, there's really not a whole lot, a whole lot more to this remote. I mean, it's it's pretty, pretty basic and pretty rudimentary. The system sounds really, really good, surprisingly enough, and I'm I'm quite happy with the system. For a $300 system, it does exactly what I needed to do, needed it to do. I am not an audiophile. I do not care about having the most expensive sound system on the market with super crystal clear sound that you can use to break crystal glasses with. That's not important to me. I want to have a little bit of speakers in the surround realm. I want to have a little, a little bit of extra noise because as I get older, my ears are getting worse and my daughter says, Daddy, do you need to have that TV so loud? Things of that effect. This does exactly what I need it to do. And it's perfect for my shop and it's perfect for what I want. All right, so that's, that's really the, the system in a nutshell. The remote is very simple to use. It does come with batteries, the system does, so that's, that's kind of typical. I haven't found too many systems that, that don't come with batteries. Uh, I recently just bought, well, yesterday actually, I just bought uh, two Roku sticks systems with, with the remotes, and the remotes both came with batteries, so that's kind of a norm. Of course, they're the... Surprisingly enough, the batteries that you get with the factory stuff is usually the ones that last the longest. I don't know why they can't put that technology into uh, batteries you buy over the shelf, but whatever, it is what it is. 
The instruction manual is very, very good. Uh, like I said, I bought the system from walmart.com. Uh, I'm not endorsing Walmart. I, I don't care where you buy the system from. I'm not getting a kickback from Walmart. I'm not getting a kickback from RCA for doing this. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. Uh, but I bought mine from walmart.com. I'll put a link in the description below. And for what the system is, it's, it's perfect for what I need it for. But if you're looking for something very, very simple and you just want reasonably decent sound in your workshop or your den or your office or even in your living room. I mean, if you've, if you've got a smaller living room and you just want to have some extra sound in your living room, this, is, this might be a very good system for you. It just depends on what your expectations are. If you're expecting to have sound like when you go into a theater and watch Star Wars, where the sound is so good you can actually almost smell the fuel being burned or smell the laser blasts, this isn't going to work for you. This isn't, this isn't what it is. This is a, a budget home theater system. Comes all in one box. Everything you need is there. They give you a whole bunch of uh, cable length to, to move the speakers to pretty much anywhere in the room you want within reason. I forget how long the wires are, but I clipped most of them off. As you can see, I had my, my building pre-wired. You might have to add some wire, but speaker wire is cheap. But they give you a pretty good length of cable. The, uh, the hookups on the back of the receiver, receiver are very well labeled for front left, front right, center, subwoofer, surround right, and surround left. You, you really can't miss it. They're, they're very, very well labeled, and it's really hard to screw it up. For the most part, the system works very, very well. I'm happy with it. Uh, I like to watch sci-fi movies. I like special effects. I like war movies, um, all that kind of stuff, and the effects are a whole part of the experience. At any rate, uh, I like the system. It is what it is. It, it's effective. It works. It's, it's not a high-end system, but it's, it's good for what it is. And if you're looking for a good system for your shop or your den, this would be more than adequate. Unless you're an audiophile, then just go off and do your thing. Until next time, this is Ed with Jack of All Trades. Thanks for riding along, and I hope this was useful for you.